Lesson 22. Today we're talking about reviewing numerical and algebraic expressions, statements, and sentences, and we're looking at conditional equations. We've got two example problems that we're going to do that will help us with all of these topics. Now, the first one is, does negative 2 or positive 5 satisfy this equation? We've got an equation of x squared is equal to negative 5x minus 6, and this is a question, does, with a question mark on the end. What we have to do here, we're trying to satisfy the equation. We're trying to make it true. So what we're going to do is wherever we see x, we're going to put a parenthesis because we're going to substitute the value of negative 2 or positive 5 in there. So we've got x squared is equal to negative 5 times our x value minus 6. And we want to know if this is true. Now, we've got negative 2 first. So let's use that negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. And then we can go through negative 2 squared, that's negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4, is equal to negative 5 times 2, that's 10, minus 6. And we know 10 minus 6 is 4, so 4 is equal to 4. This is true. So, does negative 2 satisfy the equation? Yes, negative 2 does satisfy the equation, okay, because it was correct. It was right when we check the left side versus the right side after substituting the values in. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We've got x squared is equal to negative 5x minus 6, and we're going to do the same thing for positive 5. Okay, so parentheses squared is equal to negative 5, parentheses minus 6. So x squared, wherever we see the x, we're going to put a 5, and then we can solve. 5 squared, 25. Negative 5 times 5 must be negative 25 minus 6. Negative 25 plus negative 6 is going to give us negative 31. So this is 25 over here. 25 is equal to, remember, negative 25 plus negative 6 is equal to negative 31. So that is not true. Uh, incorrect. Okay, so this one is a big no. And we're done with the problem. We've got to be sure we answer both parts of the question because there were two parts. Now, the next question says, is negative 2 or positive 5 a root of the equation x squared minus 3x is equal to 10? A root, that's a fancy way of saying a solution or an answer. It's the same statement that we had in the last problem, does it satisfy the equation? It's just a different way of asking the same question. So we're going to substitute negative 2 in for x once. We're going to substitute positive 5 in for x once. It's a different equation to see if the left side is equal to the right side. We'll see which one is true. So we've got our parentheses squared minus 3 squared, uh, oops, sorry, 3 times x, pardon me, parentheses is equal to 10. So wherever we see x, we're going to put a negative 2 this first time. So we've got negative 2 squared, that's 4. And then we've got uh, negative 3 times negative 2, that's going to give us positive 6 is equal to 10. 4 plus 6 is definitely equal to 10, so 10 is equal to 10. Negative 2, yes. Okay, that's a nice check mark there. We'll write yes underneath of it. Okay, and then our next one, We'll use a different color here. We've got x squared minus 3x is equal to 10. We want to find out if 5 is a root of it. So is 5 an answer? That's the question. Does 5 make this conditionally true? So we've got parentheses squared minus 3 times x is equal to 10. Now x in this case, of course, is 5. So we'll see if this works. 5 squared, that's 25. Minus 3 times 5, that's 15, equals 10. 25 minus 15 is equal to 10, and 10 is equal to 10. So this is true. This one's also true, and that's definitely possible. You can have problems that have multiple roots. So you can't just get one and assume the other is not. You have to go through the process with all of the different possibilities to see if they are root for the equation that you're given. Lesson practice will be on page 97. Nice work today. Write down any questions that you have, and I will see you in class soon.